What's happening, oh. world? Happy Friday. Welcome to uh, oh, another episode of Cognac Confessionals. Oh, I'm your host, Deshaun. Yeah. Uh, here at Where Media Meet Studios in conjunction with VJ TV, uh, Feral Films, History in the Making Entertainment, Keep It Cloudy Productions. The first show of 2022. We in here tonight. Uh, got my Supreme Being co host with me, Farrell. Hey. Got my man Camouflage in the building with us again tonight. Simon. You know, got my boy Donnie Fresh in the in the studio audience. Shout tonight. out to Donnie, Donnie Fresh. Fresh. What it do, man? Yeah, man. When you want, you come. Uh, go on camera. You want, bro, bro. It's all good. You know, we finna sit here and talk some shit, swallow spit today, mm -hmm. as we do every Friday. Um, as we do about this time. Yeah, no. First Friday of 2022. Man, I'm just happy for it to get here, man, because this 2021 was getting rough towards the end there. Yeah, you know, we uh we lost the icon today. You know. Man, I was shocked. My man, nine photo, man, he had a good run. Ninety four, Sydney Portier, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. That man was was an institution. Yeah, yeah, rest in peace. Rest in peace for sure. You know, that's an ancestor right Max there. Max Julian. Yeah, Billy Max White, Julian man, passed. You know? Uh, right after we did last week's show, you know, it's just been man. So what been, is it about the beginning of the year? It'd be like back to back, just icons seem like they last year was Kobe and it was so many people in that first two Kobe, weeks. I yeah. can't even name them all. Yeah, I wonder it's if it's that lot. people be trying to hang on like they be ill, but they try to hang on for the little last little holidays with the fam, and then after that they just kind of chalk it. Yeah, you know, it's, oh, that's, a theory. that's a theory, good shit, good theory. Hey, Keisha, Keisha, how you doing? Myself. Thank you for tuning in. I just don't want to chalk in front of the family. Yeah, hey, you that's. Know? Like, go ahead, man. Y'all, like, y'all don't need y'all last image of me that's... sitting y'all fucked up, you know. <laughs> yeah, you know, <laughs> once again, rest in peace to my cousin Obiaji, you know. Rest in peace. Yeah, yeah you know, we got his services next week. That's finna be, uh, we, we, I got two funerals next week. Hey, Keisha, Keisha, but you know it's all love. All love. Love to have you, so trying to chastise me. Uh, I knew you was going to tag Maria in. watching, how you doing? I see you. Good looking. Miss Hamilton. I'm just hoping that, I don't be liking to be on that new year, new me shit, but that, I really that. am on some, like, I hope some new happy things happen this year. Hey, for sure. I mean, and to... Like I've always stated, it ain't the new year. We'll give y'all that. But new year starting in spring. But you'll get that at three in the morning. That's a whole nother conversation. But you know. I mean, but yeah, a lot of people, you know, and motherfuckers join the gym and shit. Oh, I'm finna lose hella mm -hmm. weight. I'm finna I'm finna get back to my high school weight. I'm finna do all that. I mean, more power to y'all to do that shit, but that's psychological warfare on you, to be honest with you. When you set yourself up for failure with some shit in January and then by March, you didn't not did none of that shit, or you ain't been consistent with it. You can start your new year every day because every day is a new year. Facts. Uh, that's just my, Facts. the way I look at it. Every day is a new day to start over. You know, you ain't, don't wait till January first to say what you gonna do and can do or what's gonna do. Do that shit today because tomorrow ain't promised. As you see by the conversation we started off talking with. Death is everywhere and it's always happening. Nobody's promised anything but death and taxes. And even after you die, they still want their bread. Yeah, because I just already fucked off this year, man. I just, I mean, well, today. Uh -huh. I, just, I just had me some KFC. Now I'm on some cognac. Ah. So I'm going to have to get a fresh fresh start on them again at midnight. Have to get you all, yeah, we're going to get you off that KFC. I ain't going to wait till tomorrow. I'm going to wait till, well, that is tomorrow. I'm a, at midnight at 12.01, I'm back on, I'm back on my grind. There it is. But I mean, so how y'all, how y'all been this week? What's, what's good? What's y'all? What's been up with you, Flodge, man? Man, I've been good, man. It's already a week into the new year. You know what I'm saying? Time is flying by already. I'm ready to get busy, man. We're going to have a lot of good shows for y'all coming up this year. So That's what's up. Make sure y'all tune in uh, for sure. 
Cognac professionals, man. It's going. We there. Down. Oh yeah. yeah, we there. Definitely. So you don't have no resolutions. I mean, I you don't live in. You live in a new day every day. Every day is you a new me? day, but you bro. I just you, you put on your. On my your thing is, there. I don't put nothing on my calendar. Well, what I say is, uh, you, here's who who you can't hear. Keisha, who need to talk louder? I'll talk louder. Let me use let me use let me use my operator voice. So uh nah. <laughs> so I've learned. Um nah, one of the things I do is I want something, I write it down on paper. Hmm. You know, I write it down on paper, it becomes real. True that. You set a date, that becomes a plan. So I don't wait till uh New Year's to Oh, I'm finna do this. You know, like you said, new year, new me. I don't do none of that. I just, you know, I try to go with it. And I mean, I ain't saying I've done everything I've written down on paper and said I was going to do. I'm not saying I've done that, but that's how I do it. What's up with my gray sweater? I ain't got on a gray sweater. No, I, she, I asked her who she couldn't hear. It was you two. She couldn't hear as good. Oh, okay. But uh, like one of the things I used to do when I was younger, and this was as a kid, and even semi uh, teenager, if I wanted something, I'd draw a picture of it or write it down. I put the shit over my bed, and I wouldn't sleep in my bed till I got it. So you was manifesting way back then. Hey, trying to make shit happen. I'm a hustler. I'm gonna get what I want. Only thing I'm gonna do is I don't even this year. I don't even have like no material goals and this and that. Like my goal this year is just to be a, a better person. Like really. Tap in with with all my peoples, mm -hmm. rebuild some family relationships. I got siblings that I've literally gone some years without really really hollering at them, except mm -hmm. for at funerals. And so you know, I'm like, that's that's my goals this year. It's just that's what's up. usually I'd be like, oh, I'm gonna try to make this amount of money, or I'm gonna do this, or this that. That's gonna be because I'm grinding. So I ain't even yeah. focusing on that this year. I'm just simply focusing on. Making sure that the that if the if the family ain't straight, it ain't on me. Right, doing like, your part. Like I'ma swallow my pride, get over the petty shit, and you know, and you know, just holler at people, and other people reach out to people, or you know, just just fuck with people. Yeah. Don't shoot game at people. Like really, let motherfuckers know what it is. You know what I'm saying? Just yeah. just be a better person. That's my that's that's my goal for the year. That's what's happening. And that's that's and I, I feel you because that's that's the everyday process, you know. We don't have no competition. I don't have no ops. You, you still know. can't hear me. Can you hear me now? I'm looking at the level bars. I can hear you. Keisha says Keisha, she can't hear me. Can't hear. I'm gonna have to uh, get you. Um, get you. But then you know what? <laughs> that's just like real life because in real life she can't hear me either. Uh, <laughs> but you know that's yeah that's real. Manifest, dude. You always want to connect with family. Uh, all Damn, that. Carmella going in on you, Brett. Huh? She's saying you think you're a uh, Mac with your Carme gray sweater. Carmella, you gonna, <laughs> I t we not we don't bash on here. I told you that before. <laughs> they trying to go in. Why yeah. why why he, why you yeah. think why he, he a Mac, Mac with his yeah. gray yeah. sweater? You, you know, know uh, you must have tri you know triggered him. Black or all black. Or I don't know. Yeah. You must. I don't know where you must have said something. Why this triggered her? Mm. You reminded her, of dude. You know, uh, you know that one. Yeah. You know, dude. You know, saying yeah. took it. You know, took it to the spot. You know, and you know, tore it down and then ran off with an ATM card. You <laughs> reminded her, dude. <laughs> she, she triggered off that. Yeah, we having flashbacks. <laughs> he had on the gray sweater too. Uh, uh, Mama, you know, there go that man. There he is. But man, yo, but yeah, for the new year too, we lost. Uh, John Madden, I was just thinking about that. Yeah. When you uh, said what you had to say, because mm -hmm. um, one of the things I seen about Madden was that uh, everybody said he used to always speak to him. And, like, every person he talked to, for the most part, like, he would try to dig as deep into you as he can. Mm -hmm. Not to stun on you, but just to try to figure out, like. Get to know you. Yeah, to get to know you. Like, yeah. try to learn something, basically. So, like, that's what I'm on, too. Like, this year is just, like, taking that time. You know what I'm saying? To really holler at different people that yeah. I wouldn't ordinarily or like normally holler at. 
You yeah. know what I mean? Got to get outside of our Because it's a trip. We zone. know a lot of people, but then you realize some people you know and you've known them for years, and then it's really superficial. So you become right. like, uh, you know like, I'm like this year, I'll be like, wait, what's up with you, bro? What's going on with you? What's happening with you? Right. right. You know what I'm saying? That's like what strengthen I'm on. the. Just strengthen the bond, strengthen the community, strengthen the network. You know what I'm saying? To make That's it, paramount. you know, just make make shit real. Not because right. you know I've been always I shoot a little game slick. You be on some superficial shit, man. I just yeah. want to just be more, you know, more real, more solid. Yeah, I feel you. I feel you. That's what's up. Um, yeah, definitely. Uh, we had some other great news today. Talk to me. What's that? They gave the Pilgrims life without the possibility oh, of yeah. parole. I knew that was going to happen. Yeah, you know. They done learned a valuable lesson now, yeah. so they willing they, to sacrifice a couple of them to keep, to keep everybody <laughs> yeah, calm. Yeah, exactly. I mean, don't everybody don't think that the shit's over with and it didn't change forever now. Now, I ain't saying that. But motherfuckers got, I ain't going to say they didn't get what they deserve. But they got, they got, they got, they got extremely held accountable. I'm going to give them that. Yeah. So now for, to the brothers in the Georgia state system, I'm gonna be real disappointed if them dudes make it all the way through the, to a natural death. You know, like they threw Jeffrey Dahmer in there and they threw right. him at General Pop and yeah. first chance cats got they, they, boom, boom, boom. they got with him. So I'm gonna yeah. be real disappointed if these cats die from natural causes up in there. <laughs> you know. You know, yeah. I, I need to be life in a 23-hour PC cell, you know what I'm saying, special needs yard. You they know, they, they, they need to live that life. But if they hit the general population, it really should be handled. And, you know, and that's not wishing ill on anybody. But yeah, but yeah, you got, yeah, you know, you got to be semi-PC sometimes. <laughs> they might get us for hate speech. Actually, I ain't even going to lie, man. Shit, if I was on the yard, one of them dudes, I'd hit them personally. <laughs> you know, fuck it. <laughs> it is what it is, bye. Shout out to the gang. With that, I mean, you got that. Um, which I mean, like I said, that's 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 great news that that happened. So they all three got no parole. No yeah. okay. Life no possibility. No possibility. Okay, okay. Yeah. Which I mean, which is great. They was making it at first like, you know, it might just the, the main the, the one youngster that shot him. And maybe the others might might get a possibility of parole, but yeah, man, that's good yeah. to hear. Now the one dude that should be hurt the most, mm -hmm. like in his feelings, is the neighbor who rode down with them. Right. Mm -hmm. Cause I know when they hit him with the life with no possibility, and from what I understand, his attorney was the one who turned over the tape. Yeah. Like he should really be like, damn. And let that be a lesson oh. to y'all. When your partner come and say, take a ride with me, <laughs> hold on. Because now this man that went and jumped in, they dumb shit, mm -hmm. became well, a nat nationally infamous, and now he's going to sit there in life on. with no possibility. Bonquisha Jenkins Jenkins mm -hmm. said only two got no parole, the dad and the son. So with the third one hit, what, they didn't? Oh, he didn't get hit with the no parole? I thought, the thing I said, I, I thought it said all three. Yeah. But Okay. That's news. I gotta do some more research, and you know, I gotta be a, I gotta be an intelligent journalist. But one thing though, what we still need to be outraged about about that case yeah. is what a lot of people don't understand is how shitty the whole system was for them people. Right. Because the man, when they hit the man, mama, and told her that he was dead, they told she came down and asked, "Why is my son dead? Who shot him?" And the police sat her down and told her that he was caught inside of a house and the homeowner killed him in the house while he was attacking the homeowner and mm -hmm. it was a completely justified homicide. Sorry for your loss. Yeah. They then, his family took his body and buried him and sat there for months thinking mm -hmm. that he was inside of a house burglaring and, the, and the homeowners. When the footage came out and they seen that he was down the street running for his life and all that shit, but the police really sat her down, yeah. sat his mama down, and told her and a complete bullshit story. Them motherfuckers need to be held accountable, And too. if that video had never came out... Right. If that video had never came out, them crackers would have been, or them people would have been out living their lives, and his mama and them would have been sitting there telling people, well, he, he made broke a into a house, and... 
What do you expect? A homeowner's going to kill you. But they really told that man mama a blatant lie. And even though they did end up firing the prosecutor mm-hmm. for not really going in on the case, but the police chief, the people who all wrote right. the, this and that, even the people down at the morgue, they all need to still be accountable. Because can you imagine one of your kids? We all yeah. got kids. Yeah. Can you imagine one of our somebody hit us right now? We got to go down to the coroner's office, and they said, yeah. oh, your son got killed, and he was involved in some dumb shit, and he basically was his own fault. And we sitting there like, fuck. Oh, hold on. Somebody, hold on. Here we go. Mm-hmm. The neighbor got life with parole. Brian, 52, will not be eligible for, for parole under Georgia law until he served 30 years in prison. Well, he already 50. That's life. Because Back if I'm 80 and you got the Medi-Cal and all that shit, I don't want to come out. I'll stay in there. Yeah, they do. But just think, one of your, you thinking one of your kids done died over this dumb shit, you don't go have the funeral, mm-hmm. people coming to you saying, man, how did he die? You sitting there like... Wires in the house. I don't know. You know, you'd be so fucked up, yeah. and then you find out that the shit was all a lie, and he was running right. down the street being mm-hmm. terrorized. Yeah, could man, you I'd imagine? Be so motherfucking hot over that shit, man. That man, that man was running fear of his life. Yeah, you know, man, outnumbered, outgunned, because he didn't have no weapons. Yeah, he didn't even have a phone with him. Yeah, can you yeah. imagine? The fear that was in that brother's but heart. That whole cape, but the whole thing from Jump was like a roller coaster being a black person in America yeah. because, like you said, if the, they had all the bullshit from the beginning. Mm-hmm. Remember that the, the uh, prosecutor uh, quit, one resigned, one got fired or something. Right. You know what I mean? He didn't. They didn't want to charge the case. Like, how yeah. you don't want to charge the case? Because yeah. it was all that bullshit going on. That complexion. And they was, like you said, they were supposed to get away with it. Like, they, yeah. they thought they had got away with it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, if, you know it I mean? if it wasn't for that fluke. And then they like, oh, yeah. well, he they red-handed, so, well, shit, I ain't finna prosecute the case, so. Yeah. You know what I mean? But like, the tape never crazy. comes out. They be sitting at home chilling. Oh, yeah. In fact, they be lightweight heroes in they they like they, they killed do. the motherfucker and got away with it. Because mm-hmm. don't underestimate the reason why you have people like them and the Trayvon Martins and all the type of dudes is there's a group of white people out here right now who are really militant. they really on that Trump shit. They, hella they got their guns, too. and they are dying for an opportunity to mm-hmm. shoot because they know that if they say they was in fear of you, they were scared of you or anything like that, they will walk. It's well, the top. number one yeah. threat, according to the FBI, right now, today, is white nationalism. Yeah. yeah. I mean, how the hell is that possible, bro? They had an all time high. Like, yeah. it ain't Al Qaeda no more. It's no, not. No. It's never been Al Qaeda. Yeah. Like it's, it's, like, like, it's never. That's the thing about it. It's never been anything so other than citizen. white supremacy. I they, the statistics. With a of that's on that. That's the statistics on that right they give you. You know, is these are kind of getting kind of blatant with it. They got the tattoo showing. In fact, I'm in the car with dudes. We going to another job site. Yeah. When the Kyle Rittenhouse thing came through, mm-hmm. that dude pulls out his phone. He calls, says, "Woohoo!" He's cheering and talking about, "Yeah, victory for the Second Amendment." But he's looking over at me. I know he's trying to get a reaction out of me, mm-hmm. but I refuse. I I'm, I'm already I've mm-hmm. seen dudes tattoos. I already know where he's coming from. Yeah. I'm not giving him the satisfaction. You know what I'm saying? But mm-hmm. you know, and then he started talking about if they force him to take the vaccine, he's gonna gun battle, and they trying to take guns. I'm sitting there like, these motherfuckers is everywhere. You think they this are. is just some crazy motherfuckers down in Mississippi? They here in the Bay Dude, Area too, this and that, and they looking for an excuse. These motherfuckers is your policemen, they, you they your yeah. judges, they your congressmen, they your city council people, mm-hmm. they your meter maids, mm-hmm. they your your, your your delivery boys, your your your, your every, every occupation in in this corporation. One one or more of them is there. I don't give a fuck what it is. So you got to be cautious. So don't let yourself get called up and turn into when you get in road rage with somebody or they you road know. rage and you look over and it's a white dude looking like he's some type of accountant, but he trying to go there. He's like Michael he, Douglas and falling down. He's probably <laughs> be he think think before you go in there. He's probably armed and trained. And he's looking for an excuse to say he was afraid of you and shoot you. Train. These motherfuckers that want to confront you in the grocery store parking lot, this and that. All these people, because here's the thing. 
Touch and there's a hurt. whole segment of the country that will say you were at fault because you attacked the person with a weapon instead of looking at it that if I got a weapon on me and me and you get to argue, I'm going to walk away. You see what I'm saying? I don't want to hurt you. But like, what's, what's, the, what's the boy with the Trayvon Martin? Zimmerman. Zimmerman. Yeah. You start yeah. a fight, get your ass beat, and then use your gun to defend yourself. That's that some shit. Yeah, that was cold. But that's what they into. They really will mm -hmm. start some shit with you because they know that they can start it, use their gun, and then that's get right. off on self defense. I, I, I fear for my life. Yeah, you fear for your life. Actually, and I'm gonna I'm say this and catch what I'm gonna say, y'all. I'm gonna say some slick shit to you. I'm gonna say some real slick shit to you, and I need you to catch it. Mm -hmm. When they say they fear for their life, they telling the truth. <laughs> Because we the guys, we the original, and they fear for their life because their time is over. You'll get that at three in the Be morning. cautious, y'all. Don't, don't, don't. But they do don't, fear for their life. Don't, don't give these people a chance to make you into a hashtag. You know, yeah. don't let, don't fall into these traps. When you yep. see some nerd, dweeb, neck burn, neck beard, incel, acting like he wants problems, he's probably got a gun. Your family needs you. Know you know what I'm saying? These cops that want to. That don't want to tell you why they pulled you over. Like when these cops pull you over, Race and you say, "Hey, officer, why'd I pull? Why'd you pull me over?" And he says, "Oh, license and registration." And you be like, "Why'd you pull me over?" And he says, "License and registration." That's not an accident. Yeah. He's saying that Any probable cause. Well, no. The thing is, is that because they got forms, calguns.net. They got forms mm -hmm. on there, and they do that intentionally to cause you to make an emotional reaction so then they have an excuse to use force against you. Right. Because they know when you keep saying, why'd you pull me over? And mm -hmm. they keep saying, license, and they were, why'd you pull me over? They know that makes you escalate. Mm -hmm. They're doing that. In, okay. So any of you been pulled over and the cop won't say why he pulled you and keep saying license registration, he's actually doing that to cause you to make an re emotional reaction so he can use force against you. Damn. They laugh about it on their forums amongst each other on these are little tricks that they do so they can have an excuse to use force against you. All these Sandra Blands and none, all that type of shit, none of that shit is an accident. These people are actually looking for a reason and they're baiting you to give you a reason to hurt you. Right, just like one of the other Don't things they'll do it. is this question. You know why I pulled you over? And to get you to say, oh, I was, I was, mm -hmm. I was I'm in a rush. I was, nah, why'd you pull me over? Don't answer, don't answer that question. Yeah. Don't don't incriminate yourself when you no. Why did you pull me over? Mm -hmm. Just ask the question. I mean, you're entitled to ask the question. No, sir. Uh, why did you pull me over? You, and you ain't got to be hostile yeah. when you say it, but you be like, no. Um, I have no idea why did you pull me over. Yeah. Don't try to fight no case on the side of the road because yeah. it escalates into something physical, and mm -hmm. then they get to charge you with what's that good one? Resisting arrest. Oh, yeah, Even though there's right. no actual arrest because they're not charged you with that. been arrested. Resisted, yet. resisting arrest. Don't, yeah, don't fall for it, man. You know, and this ain't no tricks that they doing in Louisiana, Mississippi. Each everywhere. one of us has been pulled over, and we've said to the officer, "Why'd you pull me over?" And they just smile and keep saying, "License and registration." Every one of us has experienced that. And they're and they're doing that to make you want to fight, yeah. so then they can have an excuse to to harm you. In fact, so next time you get pulled over and he's sitting there saying license and registration instead of saying why he pulled you over or saying do you know why I pulled you over, mm -hmm. he's baiting you. Don't bite. Right. Do not bite. Right. Kenneth said, y'all paranoid. These white boys ain't trying to kill you. They are, bro. But <laughs> niggas is trying to also. So I'm going to agree yeah, with you. Kenneth, wow. Hey, yeah. hey, Ken, hey. You're right. Hey, Kenneth's down there niggas. in Georgia. He yeah. in Stone. He in Georgia. You, you know there. what's up, Kenneth. You surrounded so, by the Klan. Yeah. They, they, yeah, niggas is wilding on each other, too, which it, it sucks. It's sad. We sad, paranoid. Yeah, we paranoid. I'm just cautious. I'm cautious to everybody. I'm cautious to niggas, too. Yeah, I ain't don't let it fool you. I, just cause, just cause we got, just cause we the same complexion, don't mean you on my team. Cause hmm. niggas be trying to get people too. And and what I was, I was watching. Uh, speaking of, like speaking of, I'm glad you brought this up. You brought this because I'm a. Uh, I seen a video of uh, two dudes arguing in a parking lot, right? And it was two brothers. 
and it was a sister there. I don't know what their argument was about or whatnot, but they arguing. And the one dude, brother, tell the brother something, whatever, whatever. Yeah, wait right here. Goes to his car. And the people filming, I guess they filming from inside the store because they out in the parking lot. And dude walked back up. Now, the dude that he said, wait right here, was like, oh, oh, told the girl, whatever, moved to the side, whatever. Dude walked up. Dude, that he said, you wait right here. He just, blah, blah, blah. Why are you going to tell somebody, oh, wait the, the right dude here? The came back had a, had a Mac, a Mac 11, and he had a little AR-15. I don't know what gun yeah. he had or nothing. I just seen the video and was like, why did you tell yeah. a nigga, wait right thing, here? Like, dude yeah. walked to the, and got blocked. Everybody, that testosterone, that, that yeah. trying to be... That's just hella stupid because if it's so serious, we you got to start your gun, then I'm not going to tell you, hold on, wait right here, I'll be right back. No, you're going to go get your shit. Just sort of like cats to pull out guns for no reason. Don't do that. The number one, one rule is if you got to pull it out, then you better use it. But if you have an opportunity to walk and go get it, walk away. then that means you're not in that much danger. So you can walk and get in your car and drive away. Y'all better learn Miyagi Do Karate like on Cobra Kai. No be there. Yeah. <laughs> Cause hey, it's always better for them to say there you go than there you lay. Yeah. yeah. I ain't I ain't arguing with nobody. I don't have the energy yeah. for it. Or In fact, I'm gonna use that as a good cap. Oh, you wait right here, I'll be right back. So while he's standing there waiting for me to be back, he's gonna be like, Is that blood pulling out the parking lot? Oh, he cut. He a coward. Call me what you want to. But you won't be calling me for child. You won't be calling me for visits. You won't be calling me. You won't be calling me for yard time on some 23 hour lockdown. I ain't going out like that. I'm I'm a even if I'm super pissed, I'm a I'm a hopefully my my mental will kick in and I'll be like, you know something? Whatever, bro. You got it. You won. You 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 got the argument. I can't see no scenario of me shooting somebody and pulling a gun. I can see somebody. plenty unless of scenarios. You're, but unless you're in the I'm middle of unless you're in the middle of my living room, but even then, man, if you turn around and you running out the door, I'm, yeah, because if I shoot you, you know, in the back, now nah, it's on me. Yeah. Oh, you know, like cats used to back in the day, go outside and chase a nigga all down the street to shoot him. No, nah, I'm gonna be like, man, we gotta make sure we lock this door a little better. But I just can't see myself, you know, kill. Or you go outside, somebody break it in your car, they try to take your catalytic converter, and I'm just going to, I just can't, I don't know, baby, I just got a little zen, but I just can't see myself hurting nobody over over no shit like or that. Or you'd be I'll like, be asking, give be, me a reason. Be like, be like, be like, be like, be like a nigga, be, be a smart nigga, keep, uh, I mean, if you're the, let me quit playing. Nah, I, I was going to say something, house, I ain't going to say it, because somebody going to take it I'm going to down you if you're in the middle of the house, you know what I'm saying? But if you're still in my stereo, I, I'm not, I'm not going to get busy. Got to sh- shoot him in the pinky toe or something. Man. But if you're inside man, the house, I'm probably, I'm probably going to do you in. <laughs> keep, keep, keep. Let me keep it all the way 100. I'm probably going to do you in if you're in the house. Keep poisonous pets and just, oops, damn, he got bit. Oops. <laughs> my bad. He, he put his hand in the cage. Yeah. He thought hey, I was in fear of he my thought, life. He thought that's where the money was. Oops. I was in fear of my life. Put a poison dart frog in your mouth. My bad. I just don't want to be in no situation. I'm, I'm, I'm man, thoughtful shoot like the cat that. I, I and think it's some devious shit. And fuck up my drywall. See, that's what I don't want to do. I don't want to fuck up my drywall. I told you, I keep fish because they don't talk. <laughs> yeah, I, you know, I don't want to fuck up my Put your hand in my fish tank. Stonefish your ass to death. Be like, oh, like, damn, nigga. That's where the diamond's at. They in the fish tank, nigga. <laughs> With the piranhas. Yeah, fuck up. Man, so what's up with that boy Antonio Brown, man? What's, oh what's, yeah, we gotta we gotta dive into that. Definitely, oh definitely, <laughs> definitely. So that's your man's. <laughs> I, I let y'all go first with it, and because I, I'm you know me, I'm gonna I'm gonna play devil's advocate with it. So I want to hear y'all's take on. It. I saw an interesting thing on Twitter, but they was talking about that. I guess it was a, this this white chick earlier last year who got went viral, she was licking a toilet seat. And apparently that's his chick now and he's married. So somebody was on Twitter, they were saying that this man, how he acted a plum fool, chasing Becky's, how long are we supposed to stay on code trying to defend this man? Mm-hmm. And I was like, wow, you know, like, 
that's a, that's a point there. Like, like you know, as a black man, you be wanting to be like, man, support that brother, this and that, right? Mm-hmm. But he kind of so far out there and on some other shit that you kind of be like. All right, mm-hmm. at what at what point do we march? Or at what point do we say, man, that nigga on his own, blood? <laughs> he wildin'. Right. I get you, I get you. Fly. I mean, you know, it's always that, you know, that, that CTE, you know, That's type stuff that, 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 that could be possible. Right. I don't know. The shit was so really wild. Would it really affect you this young? So... Oh yeah, it affects really you right good. away. You know what I'm saying? It can affect you right away. Bro, you've been playing football like since since they was seven and whatnot. But I'm just saying, though, but like the junior Seau type of people, rest right. in peace well, and stuff do. like that. They was in their forties and fifties. Right. But like even like when you have boxers that start to get a little punch drunk. Yeah. Even in their thirties, they start slurring their speech and stuff right. like that. Like if you look at like uh, James Tony, even Evander Holyfield. Mm-hmm. But it's not until. They they forties and so that they start really doing the wild shit. But, but they've been able to do uh like cat scans on on the kids and little in youth football, right? Mm-hmm. And they can already see damage. So it's just a matter right. of the they individual hit. and how your body reacts to that change in the brain. Exactly. Okay, so it saying? is possible for him to be suffering symptoms yeah, already right. at his age. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. then it's possible that he just wilding out too. Yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I can't just make an excuse because you play football. <laughs> like, that's just automatically it. But we just mm-hmm. assume that you will be happy making millions of dollars. And you could see from Patrick Willis and, yeah. you know, Junior Seau and others who retired I think he's about a little. to make the Hall of Fame, too. That... <laughs> Sam? People was like, no, Shit, man, the hell was football, you know what I mean? So, you know, I don't know, man. I'm kind of like new. If it was so but wild, been that I, I'm for just a long like, time, though. and that's the that's the whole thing, you know what I mean? But then you got a lot of uh, big names that that know him as being different and seeing seeing a change in him. So I don't know, man. Like I'm kind of <laughs> like, it's wild, but I don't know, man. I don't really have no like like back in the days they used to call cats like him high strung. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So I'd be like, man, how much this is high strung and how much of this is several concussions? Because, mm-hmm. like, I know in boxers, like Riddick Bo, he had, by the time he turned 30, man, he was slurring his speech, kidnapped his wife, did all kinds of wild shit. And what's this other boy, Jermaine Taylor? In fact, I think Jermaine Taylor might even actually be in prison right now. He ended up doing some I wild think, shit, was I flipping out did. and shit like that. And they was in their 30s, but I thought most of the time, though, you get... It's, you start showing your first signs at 30, but it's 40, 50 that you really, but, but you got the combination with him. Could be he's a high strung personality you, and the CTE coming together that. And you got to add, you got to add in the factor of that individual's lifestyle. We don't know if they own um, recreational shit, mm-hmm. you know, what, how, what they doing, you know, you think of just, just, I'm a, I'm a, and I'm just using, I'm being devil's advocate. You know, just trying to open up the thought process of exactly what y'all are saying is what my actual, what my stance is on it. We don't know their lifestyle. Sleep deprivation, not saying that he has it, mm-hmm. but that affects you. You know, being on the go, especially you now, um, we don't know his relationship status, his financial mm-hmm. shit going on. Mm-hmm. A bunch, well, there's so many f- X factors that we don't know that add to, you know, little slithers of this pie. In this situation, now is he a hothead? Does he does he bring put himself in situations? Yes, yes he does. I'm gonna say that. Now, your but at the same does time, his career. I, yeah, I, I say it ends his career. I will say, yeah, it should. Just on the, even though sports is a farce, I think it should. On the level. Mm-hmm. Now, the other part of this is his response to why he, why everything happened mm-hmm. about his ankle and the coaches and them knowing about his ankle was sore and he had an MRI that proves he had an MRI mm-hmm. that showed he had an injury and he showed some text messages w- between him and the coach that, hey, we, uh, you know, we want you out there. We're not taking. So everybody, because media controls your first thought. That's going to get him his See, job back. That's, that's the thing. Job. Yeah. The media, because, and this is me being devil's advocate, because, yeah, it's easy for us to say, oh, this nigga tripping again. Here this nigga go. And don't get me wrong. 
sometimes, a lot of times, it just be, yeah, this motherfucker tripping. But if you're the black sheep, and I'm going to call him the black sheep in this situation, that's uh, always doing some shit to yourself in your own way, it's easy for the rest of society to be like, yeah, that's just motherfucker. That's just AB being AB. When these other factors could have some shit into it. And now it's possible that he was on point with his shit. It was like, bruh, my ankle was fucked up. I can't know. You supposed to get in right now. We want you in. Because remember, this is a sport. They don't give a fuck about you yeah, personally. Dating. Your health. Exactly. Sports. Give them cake. They will eat. And you'll be entertained. And we subscribe to that shit wholeheartedly. The original athletes used to fight to the death. The yeah, gladiators. Exactly. Keep the circus. So now, what is it about the wide receiver position, though, that seems to attract such divas? wild dudes? Because <laughs> Randy Moss was a wild dude. T.O., Michael Irvin. Andre because Rising, you know, it's, it's, Andre it's, Rising was a beast. Yeah, you know. But those positions, just in my posi my humble opinion, those positions are the risk takers. I mean, I saying that all the positions are not risk takers because every time you put your helmet on and go on the field, you you take a risk of some shit happening to you. Mm -hmm. Shit, punters even get fucked up. Yeah. Well, wide receivers is always <clears throat> gonna be usually the number two highest paid behind right. the quarterbacks. And then exactly. you got the running backs, right? So, mm -hmm. I mean, they they gonna be a target just because they they superstars, right? You know, you're making all that bread. I'm out there making these miraculous catches, putting my body in defenseless positions for some yeah. linemen, some free safety, excuse me, to come across and just smack the sonic rings out my ass. <laughs> yeah, wide receivers do probably take the most defenseless hits of anybody. Yeah, and the league is only started to uh put pampers on yeah them. put yeah pampers on them. exactly no i don't know because shit th think now. about it he, he, <laughs> and i'm, I'm gonna say this cats and i with the red with the red none cats. of these cats <laughs> with the red with the red not to be touched dirty the quarterbacks were in practice these well, cats be these cats the wouldn't survive in the jack tatum so. era <laughs> <laughs> you know, just think about it. These cats wouldn't have survived in the Jack Tatum era when you was able to just I literally clothesline somebody. I disagree. You don't think they could have survived? I think I careers that, would have been shortened. Let me let me qualify that statement. They wouldn't have been able to survive that style of football. That's what that I'm talking about. Played now, right? But, but the a, a to. At 6'3", 228, ain't nobody in the 70s bringing that cat down. He's going to be strong. He, a cat like a T.O., a cat like, what's what's this boy they call Megatron? Yeah. Oh, yeah. You put Calvin them on Johnson. the field in 1977. Yeah, when, and they, when the lineman was like 5'9". Yeah, you know what I'm saying? You, you, you take a T.O. or the nine, Megatron two, or some, of, the, that was some, some, of, the, some of these receivers right. from these modern times, they would... Whoever was the meanest, toughest linebacker out there, they'd stiff arm him like we do a little kid. But if they mm -hmm. played that style of football against these other athletes that they got out there nowadays, then then no, they wouldn't be able to survive. You, you have you cats scared to go across the middle. put them in 1975, we yeah, might see 3,000-yard seasons, you know. <laughs> yeah, it's too hard to no. cross errors, man. It's basketball, true, but football, football, like... And that goes to basketball, too, because there ain't a oh. man alive in 1985 who could have stopped LeBron James. Kevin Dennis Durant would average about 40 points a game on these dude, on them dudes back in the days that made it look easy. Dennis Rodman would swallow. Dennis Rodman and would I don't be mean that 50 sexually. to 60 pounds <laughs> against LeBron. And <laughs> you know, hey, Garden 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 Carl Malone Robin, in the post and digging elbows in his back Robin, is a whole lot different than than, than LeBron James sorry. facing up on Kevin you McHale, and taking you to the back. Bill McHale, Lane Beer would oh my god. Come on, dude. LeBron James would average a triple double for his entire career. He would average 30, 15, and 15 against them dudes in the eighties. Mm -mm. 
Put it to you like this. Game that, I don't think so. I'm going to tell you something. So. There's a reason why Charles Barkley. Y'all not sucking me into this. Hey, hour, there's so a reason why Charles Barkley and Carl Malone were so effective in the late 80s and the early 90s. Right, Jenkins. It's because right. they, were they, so much, they were so much stronger than everybody else. Cats didn't even lift weights. Could you like this? Kevin Durant has played his entire career against guys who lift weights against guys who are strong. Mm -hmm. Kevin Durant would be more equipped to deal with strong guys than them guys back then. But them guys back then would not be able to stop a Kevin Durant. There's nothing they could do. He could drop 50 right. and not even they bring a the sweat. They didn't shoot. I, I get, I get what you're saying. The biggest, but... strongest guys in the league back in them days, the Rick but... Mahorns and the, and the Carl Malones, Right, He's barely if had, probably as strong as LeBron is right if now. If they had the LeBron rules, LeBron would be arguably the strongest dude in the league, one of the fastest dudes in the league, nah, forty nah, inch vertical. Nah. And I'm a James. The open man. There's nothing that a but dude in the '80s could do to stop LeBron James. Yes, it is. Dennis <laughs> Rodman. The court. All of it. I'm I mean, if they just what blatantly hacking him, so we be we got that, that, no we playing we playing by the eighties rule. Jordan, we Jordan put averaged them, as many foul put, shots as James put, Harden did. Put put them in they the same fouls way. Back then. Put them in the same way. <laughs> with Come the on, rules Bob. and then don't leave me out of these cats. I'm sorry, you know I'm cats. just being honest. You know, in 1989, put you like this. AC Green was considered a rugged power forward, and he was two thirty five. Right. Could you imagine LeBron trying to, to dunk up. on Daryl Dawkins? Not gonna happen. <laughs> Please stop that. Oh, yeah, yeah. Let LeBron. I'm saying. <laughs> let Birdle. Birdle let mix Darryl up Dawkins LeBron. Let Daryl Dawkins come out the paint trying to guard LeBron. That's that's air one all day. <laughs> Crazy. You can't. I, I just I can't go across the air. Bill Lane beer. Because now you I know got, it's tough. You got yeah, six, I get seven it. shooting guards now. Yeah, it's yeah. just that so was... weird, bro. You got man. You got dudes that's. <laughs> Seven two that can shoot threes out of this world. Like right. the game has changed, man. It's just it's hard. Sad, I can't. You that's know. that fantasy versus. It's it's hard, that's why you man. leave it. That's why you leave yeah. it to the PlayStation on uh, Harrison Barnes on two K. Like and, and you watch <laughs> six eight can shoot the three. Harrison Barnes, oh, definitely put his elbow on the rim. Uh -huh. Harrison Barnes would look like a freak of nature in nineteen eighty nine. Facts. He would. He would. But what player from back then could play like in any generation? You think? I think Dominique Magic. Yeah, I mean, Dominique, Dominique. A six nine Magic. point guard that can always hit the right man. Dominique uh, Magic. Uh, I, Dominique I, Wilkins Isaiah, is really good. Wilkins. Yeah, Bird. Because he was he was. Super Wilk, like, yeah. I mean, a seven foot dude Kareem, that can run and Kevin, jump like him, Kevin, he gonna be he able to get it. Kareem would kill. Oscar Robertson mm -hmm. would kill. Uh, so going back to like you said about Isaiah and stuff. I've seen people saying, oh, guys like Steph Curry wouldn't be able to get it in back in them days because, you know, they're too frail. Steph is bigger by about 20 pounds than Isaiah Thomas was. Yeah. The tiny Archibald. Man, Steph Even Tim Hardaway. They converse, man. They wouldn't Is be it? able to guard Steph right now. <laughs> oh, and you got to remember, see, I was around back in them days. Me too. A lot of people had the philosophy of let him shoot the three. Mm -hmm. People didn't even go out and defend the three mm -hmm. or let him shoot. It's a low percentage. Mm -hmm. You know, you might come out a little bit out there. Hey, oh, you're going to shoot the three, man. We're going to block out mm -hmm. for the board. Can you imagine a team yeah, playing the, the philosophy of we're going to let Clay and Steph shoot? Like, we're going to let them have that. Yeah. <laughs> You'll be down lights by out. 50 <laughs> right. by halftime. Right. right. Be lights out. Yeah, the game's changed too much. I just can't go across, man, because the guys are bigger, faster, stronger. True. They, and they and they learn from all the OGs, you feel me? True. Everybody went to the park and did your favorite. Uh, Jordan, uh, Dominique. Guy, you know, the guy yeah. that you like, whoever the player you like, you know, you did they moves. You, you, all, studied, you see, you Kobe, Kobe was sticking his tongue out the first two years in the league. Mm -hmm. I used to be well, like, this Jordan clown is up here sticking his damn tongue out. Rest well, in peace, he wound up peace. being... One of the good. Arguably, As good or better, I don't know. You know what I mean? Arguably, but, he's, man, he's you right know what there. I mean? But at first, I was like, but he was just. Right. But beast. that also Learned goes back to what him. you're saying. You see, like a lot of cats, like Jordan jumping from the free throw line was some damn near impossible shit in the 80s, right? Mm -hmm. But then the whole generation grew up seeing that that's possible. And they started practicing. You right. see what I'm saying? So when you see a dude do, like, there's, like in the Olympics, the 100 meters, mm -hmm. like, 
there were certain times that was supposed to be unbreakable. Mm-hmm. But then when a cat finally broke it, you had a whole nother generation knowing that. That's so when you see for. a person, so you got the whole generation growing up seeing these guys able to do certain things. Mm-hmm. So then they was able, you know, you able if to Zach do Levine it. Levine did some of the dunks he did in the eighties. Oh, motherfuckers would have ran out the stadium. He'd be considered the greatest dunker. <laughs> he would have ran. They would have ran out True. the stadium. He'd be considered the greatest right. dunker of all Going time. Between under his leg yeah. and him and Vince. Just imagine if Vince Carter was in the eighties. Oh, it'd be preposterous. Yeah. Because when Vince Carter jumped over that dude in the Olympics. Oh, the dude, seven foot seven dude? Yeah. I was like, wow. That was like, <laughs> that's been 20 years. I'm still sitting there like, wow, that's just been a. Yeah. But then I just saw a highlight on TikTok of a high school dude jumping over a cat. Mm-hmm. So, you know who, what I'm saying? So, so, like, so let me ask y'all this. Who's some, of the, who's some of the Bay Area high school legends that never went good. to the league? Gerald Walker. You could you could tell me names. you couldn't tell on. me Gerald Walker wasn't wasn't gonna go. Man, man that dude used to fill up high school stadiums to yeah. the brim, like yeah. people man standing out the peeking through the door, like mm-hmm. him and who did he play with? Uh, was it Juma? Who was the dude he yeah, played with? Yeah, it was uh, uh, I forget, but it was a cool ass forward that he had played with. But man, Gerald Walker was one of the dopest high school players I ever saw. And him only going to USF, I still thought he was going to have action. Mm-hmm. What's the dude from Mac? Darnell Tucker. Mm-hmm. You know, Darnell oh, Tucker, 6'9", yeah, isn't that? Yeah, I thought D-Tuck he was. Tuck was, was rough. Uh, but Hook, Jamoki Horton. But Hook, man, yeah. Hook, Hook was, Hook had stupid Hook was, high. Yeah. He was like a, he was like a street yeah. legend too. Like, Hook had to Jimmy too. at the park. Yeah. I ran into Hook probably about, I want to say about 10 years ago, man. And I was I was playing basketball a lot back then, and he was like OG back then, and I I ran into him at the Bay Fair 24, mm-hmm. and so I'm guarding him, and I'm like, man, I'm guarding a legend, like I'm trying to play it cool, like yeah. I do this yeah. every day, mm-hmm. but you know I locked him down a little bit, you know I had D, I was in shape, so he started getting a little frustrated because I was I was I had the clamps on him, mm-hmm. and so he took me to the rack. He 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 took me to the rack, and we get to the we get to the uh, we get to the block, mm-hmm. and I thought he was just gonna shoot like a finger roll or something because I'm backpedaling, and he just jumped and he just kept going up, <laughs> and he just kept, <laughs> he just bashed on me, and I'm like, I thought he was gonna do a finger roll like I. It was bad, and motherfuckers took off running and all that shit, you know what I'm saying? But, mm-hmm. yeah, that's one of my most embarrassing moments, but it's it was right. by a legend, you know what I mean? Hey, you gotta get, get the legends, but I, they That do. was my one chance I guarded Hook, man, and 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 like I said, I, I don't even think he was hardly playing basketball. Yeah, he was probably but, crawled up. But And there was another boy that, uh, he went to Logan, and let me tell you something. He didn't end up making the league. But he's actually a respected shooting coach throughout the league. In mm. fact, he was a shooting coach for the Lakers, and that's the boy Phil Handy. Mm-hmm. Mm. Phil Handy was a uh, like I seen one game. He was playing for Logan. He was playing against somebody, and he dropped thirty six, and he dropped it so smoothly that you thought he had about twenty because he he it was in the flow. You know, sometimes cats just be dropping, and you know, it ain't like they ISO in, so it ain't like. Mm-hmm. It's like he had 36, and like he was, the dude was the truth. He ended up going to the University of Hawaii, and then uh, his high school career kind of kind of messed up because his family was Jehovah Witnesses. Yeah. So they was like, "You can't play on Friday nights." I think the coach got frustrated and tried to end up with a lawsuit against the school because the coach was like, "Man, if he can't ball, he can only play have it in." Get him up out of here, you know what I'm saying? But then when he got to college, he shook the Jehovah's. The, but he's actually a shooting coach. I know he was a shooting coach for the Pelicans. He was a shooting coach for the Lakers. Shout out to brother. Too fact, but uh, yeah, Phil Handy, uh, Gerald Walker, uh, out the city, Winners Patterson. He dropped eighty against Castlemont. Damn. He went to Balboa over there, and he ended up he enrolled at City College in San Francisco and had a heart attack on the. Uh, on the court, he had the heart rhythm. Yeah, okay. Yeah, but Winters Patterson, he dropped eighty against. He dropped sixty against Tech, and he dropped eighty against Castlemont. That's still the Bay Area record. Eight, Winters Patterson, eighty points against uh against Castlemont. He died. 
Yeah, he died. Yeah, he died. Yeah, I yeah, think. Yeah, uh, that partner, I think my partner had posted some highlights of him on his Instagram. Man, he was true. You couldn't tell me that boy wasn't headed to the NBA. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I said he dropped 80. And you know, they was doing, you know, you know, cats do the boxing one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, you know, they was doing like a four and one, like four, four cats yeah. all trying to stop him, and he still dropped 80. You know what I'm saying? Probably one of the best street ball players to ever come out the city. You know what I'm saying? But uh in fact I thought you like when I see cats like Eddie House mm -hmm. made it to the not yeah, no, Eddie House no, was dumb. Eddie no House slight was against Eddie House, but like Eddie House not only made it to the league, was in there like eleven years. Wasn't even like mm -hmm. no fluke, like oh he was just there for a minute. Yeah. And then I think a cat like Gerald Walker was better than him. Yeah. And Gerald Walker then and that's wild to me. Because, yeah. you know, don't, don't get me wrong, Eddie House was the truth, but yeah, I didn't, was I wouldn't wrong, have thought you know? Eddie House was a better player than yeah, Joe you know, Walker was. Eddie House. I think Eddie matured. Shout out Ed, too. That's my boy. We went mm -hmm. to Logan together, played a lot, a lot of hoop together. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think Eddie matured, like, later. I think they maturity time was different. I see what you're saying. His you know, peak, his yeah, peak he, was in college. I think he broke Kareem's record. Uh, when he was at ASU, he scored like 60-something in the game. He had all them threes. He was going crazy like Curry or something. Oh, he could light it up, too. Yeah. But you know, in high weeks. school, you know, he was my competition. I'm like, you know, he all right. You know, that's my right. partner. He good. But when he went to ASU, I was, he just separated. I mean, he was separate, you know, separated from us. He was he was definitely the man like he but you didn't say stroke. but you didn't say oh this right. guy's going to the yeah, yeah you know i always felt like with a little bit more work i could catch him mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what i'm saying but so, like when he went to asu he was it was like apparent that he was in a league of his own sort of like dame lillard like to me dame lillard is one of the top beast. top guards in the nba but coming Period. out of high school now nah, he gonna go d1 yeah but nobody who saw him in high school was gonna be like oh he's gonna be one of the best players in the world right you know what i'm saying but he ended up mature, like you said, he matured because by that senior year in college, okay, he's obviously the truth. But he's mm, coming out of high school, nobody was like, "Oh, this dude mm. finna be," you know, "Oh, he finna be," you know. Games are big. But argument. a lot of these cats we talking about, the knots, the have knots, the, you know, it's it's a lot of it is man, just what got a lot of us was just like I'm being too. in the streets and just like. Yeah. Some people had discipline and, you know what I'm saying? Opportunity. And, right, yeah. and opportunity for sure, but, like, yeah, discipline. And I know. Like Darnell Robinson. Mm -hmm. Like, I know I think he did make the league for, like, a year. Mm -hmm. But, you know, the all-time leading scorer in the state of California is Darnell Robinson. Mm -hmm. Like, he broke a Bill Cartwright's record. Like, Darnell Robinson was, you know, coming out of high school, was one of the best players in the nation, and he – Ended up barely making the league and was only there for like a year. And I'm sitting there like, this man was 6'11 and could could ball. I thought he was going to be a dominant player on every level. Yeah, he was a beast. I'm going to give him yeah. his props. But you know, there was some, but you know, I had the fortune though. But my my, 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 my thing is biased because I, I had the good fortune of seeing Gary Payton in high school. G. Payton. And seeing Jason Kidd in high school. Yes. So... You know, so when other cats have come along after them and been like all Americans, all that, I still become like, hey, yeah, all right, mm -hmm. because I'm comparing him to cats that we have we have been blessed. We knew it was to going see. to go to the Hall of Fame, so we, you know, so the standards in right. the Bay Area ball you is got so Antonio Davis. So you got, you got we got a lot of town cats that was beasting on the ball game. Mm -hmm. Facts. In fact, that was the mistake Cal made. People don't realize Dirk Nowitzki signed with Cal. Mm -hmm. Dirk Nowitzki was supposed to go to Cal, but they brought him over early to stash him. And then they had him balling against these Bay Area cats, like some cats who had played in the Pro-Am, some mm -hmm. cats who had played D1, and Dirk Nowitzki went out there and was murdering them. And he murdered them to the point that somebody said, hey, fuck Cal, you should go. You, This guy's actually ready for the league. And that's when NBA scouts started coming to check him out. So Cal thought they had him stashed to mm -hmm. enroll next year, mm -hmm. and he was playing against the – because it's a lot of quality ball being played yeah. here in the back. Always, and so when always. this skinny dude from Germany came over and couldn't be stopped by nobody, mm -hmm. motherfuckers was like, hey, he might – this might sound far-fetched, but this dude might be playing the league. 
So the scouts got him work out, and he went and he went as a lottery pick. But Dirk Nowitzki was supposed to go to Cal. He was supposed to revitalize the program. But you know, but once he got over here in this bay and got the balling, and here's another secret y'all might not know. Mm-hmm. Dirk loves the sisters. Dirk loves the sisters. So we got over here, got the, got, woman, got a couple of town broads, and uh, said Dirk wanted the paper. Fuck mm-hmm. college. <laughs> but it worked out for the best because he's a Hall of Famer. Oh, yeah. Facts. So, it's a uh, Friday as we always. Good. Uh, it's a good Friday, too. Yeah, it is. It's the first Friday. They canceled first Fridays in Oakland tonight. They should have been. Everybody catching Everybody, that. It's yeah, not, y'all be safe out there, even man. With, even if you vaccinated, man. People y'all be still safe. Sick yeah, I've, this, I've seen a few. Thing. Yeah, my timeline. People... Y'all be safe, man. Um, I know projects. You got uh, your love and aliens. Oh yeah, on. most definitely. We got a couple of things we're working on. Uh, we got Candace. I actually got a surprise. We got a a really famous, uh, really famous young lady who's agreed to come through. She's uh, mm-hmm. close friends with Cardi B and all of them, and. Uh, She's decided to come bless the project and stuff. Sure. So, man, we got some real, we got some, we got some major cooking for y'all. Some major shit. Come on, what you got coming this year? Got a lot of music coming up. Um, yeah, we're gonna be doing a lot of singles this year. Just trying to get, just trying to get Videos it back too? out there. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna do a few few visuals for sure, and just moving forward. Uh, more podcasts. We want to do another podcast for sure. Okay. Um, just, just try to hit everybody from all different angles, man. That's what's up. Network It'd be like octopus or squid. Actually, because squid got ten tentacles, octopus only got eight. You got any? You got any done? Are you about to go into the lab or cook something up fresh, or you you march? Right now, I got a whole man. I got a whole email just full of beats from. Uh, Mm-hmm. All over the world, to be honest with you, um, yeah. just so it's a lot to go through. It's a lot to listen to, but yeah, I've been just going through and just picking stuff out and just you know getting ready. Not just for me though. We got projects for other people too. That okay, yeah, you, know, you got a whole camp. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah that's where we going. And speaking of beats, I want to give take a moment to uh, rest in peace to Tracks a Million. Oh yeah, that's you know what, what I'm saying. Yeah. Legendary Bay producer. That's another one we just lost. Yeah, after Friday, yeah, tracks a million. Yeah. It's just man, it's man. It's like hey man, love your people, and don't let a day go by without letting your loved ones know you care about them, you love them, you're proud of them. You know, you want to see them do better because a hey, uh, a word not shared is a is yeah. a chain of regret. Give them like flowers while they're here, man. Mm-hmm. For real, though. Especially if they're out here moving, man. You know what I'm saying? Don't be too cool for school, man, to acknowledge, <sighs> acknowledge your folks, especially if they're moving me. You know what I'm saying? Because, like, cause like, for instance, I got my analytics, right? Like, I put up an Instagram post, and I got, like, 120 likes, right? Mm-hmm. But when you look at the analytics, and it reached, like, 9,000 people. Mm-hmm. Like nine thousand people that saw it, but I got a hundred yeah, likes. People don't right. like to hit that like button, you know. They be yeah, feeling like, like you would think if nine thousand people see it, you'd have hundreds of likes. At least you don't expect everybody to love it or like it. And some people yeah. only watch for a few seconds, but out of like nine thousand people, only a hundred people hit the like. Like that's not even one percent of one percent. Mm-hmm. You're sitting there like so. A lot of y'all that's out there, and y'all trying to push y'all careers and stuff like that, and you think that you're only getting 40, 50 likes of people not there. Nah, actually, there's thousands of people who are actually seeing you, and they seeing you. So just keep grinding. Don't give up. Hey, for real. That's like even with this. You know, I, I appreciate everybody that like, comment, y'all that's watching. You know, I'm humbly grateful. Um, you know, I appreciate y'all commenting. You know, if you share the page, that's great. I appreciate it. You know, we're just trying to grow, keep it moving, you know, grow. Uh, we got a bunch of shit, you know, trying to do for this year going forward, you know. And hopefully y'all be along for the ride, you know. On the journey, come with us. Let's do it, you know what I'm saying? We got we got room on the plane, you know. But uh, this year's price ain't last year's price. <laughs> Come down, holler at us, man. Come get on the show. 
for real. got something you want to push, come down here and holler at us. Hey, for real. And, and for y'all that, and here's one thing, I'm going to say something real quick. For y'all that do message me and try to follow my personal page, follow me, uh, comment, send me a message if you're trying to follow my personal page. And my personal page is my personal page. Uh, my Cognac Confessionals page is open all day. If you're trying to network with me, you can message me on my personal page, but let it know what's in reference to, you know, the, the podcast. Because, like I said, my personal page is my personal page. Uh, you know, so, but I do appreciate, like I said, everything, every like, comment, subscribe. Man, y'all share the shit, man. Uh, and I want to wish everybody a prosperous 2022, 2023, 2024, infinity. You know, I'm, I'm gonna, you know, we just be that beacon of light that we love, light, and, and share love. You know what I'm saying? We're trying to spread health, wealth, and knowledge and call people out on their bullshit like we do. Um, once again, I'm your host, Deshaun. Here at Cognac Confessionals on IG, you can find me at Cognac underscore Confessionals. Farrell, tell the great oh, people yeah, where they can find you. You can find me at uh, Farrell Films across the board, TikTok, Twitter, uh, Instagram, Facebook, the whole nine. And I'm at Camouflage, K A M M A F L A G E. Tap in, tap in, tap in. A lot of exciting things, man. Looking forward to sharing them with y'all. Yeah, you know, I got a YouTube channel too, you know, you can check out old posts on the uh, old shows on this page and on the YouTube channel. I need to put some more stuff, content on my YouTube page, but check us out, you know what I'm saying? We just trying to do what we do. All right, Candace, what's happening? Hey. And when you shoot those videos, man, make sure you put Candace up in there. Yeah. What's up, Candace? Candace, we no, can't you at for you. Candace, yeah. <laughs> but uh, I appreciate y'all. Thank you for tuning in. You know, it's a Friday. You can be doing anything in the world, but you chose to sit here and chill with us. And, and with us. we humbly appreciate it. And uh, now it's time to say goodbye to, to all, all my Negro, Negro friends. friends. Catch y'all next week.